uh, just a silent moment, and if it's okay, I'll dismiss this in prayer. Is that all right? Anything to be said? Okay, I'll dismiss this in prayer when we're all done, okay? Would you go to your Bibles to Colossians, please? Colossians. Colossians chapter number 3. Set this down. Here you go. Right. Colossians chapter number 1. I'm sorry. Chapter 1. And I figured since, you know, you came forward to sing, I'm going to come out to where you're at to uh, hear this lesson. I'm getting closer. Don't you worry. I'm coming on back even further. <laughs> Just got to find Colossians first. Here I go. Now, in the book of Colossians, Paul's the writer here. And as he writes, he's writing to people that have recently been saved. This is, now Paul is, a, is a, what we call a, a father in the ministry, a, a missionary among missionaries. Uh, he started a number of churches. This particular group, he's not responsible for their salvation. Humanly speaking, you understand that? Humanly speaking. Uh, it was a, one of his co-workers that had led these people, Lord. Epaphras, I believe his name was. And uh, he, he's, Epaphras is communicated to Paul. Now Paul writes to these people as Epaphras' father in the ministry. And so as, as this, uh, uh, the, the gospel, the New Testament is beginning to get its momentum, now Paul has its place in that particular uh, church society. And now he writes back, and here's his words to them. In Colossians chapter number 1, verse number 9, he said, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, that is, their, their conversion, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of what? God. All right. I'm going to make some applications. Just hang with me. Make some applications. Hey, by the way, I thank those that got the balloons up this morning. I come back after we ate. I was going to pick my mess up. Very little bit to pick up, so it was all taken care of. <laughs> Let me just, just talk with you. Just, just get comfortable. Get comfortable. Don't get nervous on me. Just get comfortable. Let me just talk, all right? Is that all right if I just talk? Let me share you with some things that I don't like. My list could be very long. I limited them, okay? Just a limit. Some things I don't like. This is this personal thing about me. I do not like liver and onions. My mom, my mom, my mom, for whatever reason, cooked it a lot. She even, I was thinking about this this afternoon, she even invited the preacher and his wife over one time. I'd already moved out of the house. Wife over, and, and, I, and I come back, and they were eating liver and onions. Who invites guests over and feeds them liver and onions? Ooh. To this day, and I ain't a whole lot I can't eat now that I'm older and, you know, whatever. But I, I just don't think I'm going to eat liver and onions. Here's something else I don't like. I don't like uh, bullies, verbal or, or, or physical. I don't like people that just, just, just bully people around, push them around because they can't. It's, it, it grates on me. It gets under my sin. I do not like it in any area. Just, it, it's just personal, okay? Just some personal things about me I don't like. Uh, people who are surly and don't care about doing their job. Oh, man, that just gets under my skin. If you don't want to work here, go somewhere else. Quit. I don't care. Boy, that gets under my skin. I, I, believe, I believe if people have a job, they ought to do their job. And if they're not qualified to do their job or not, or not, or not, or not don't want to do it, go somewhere else, man. I just, it just, it gets under my skin. You, you go out to restaurants sometimes, and, 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 and one of the jobs they have, one of their main jobs is to, to serve. Hello? And they, here. I, I want to take it back and throw it back at them. Boom, here are you. I don't, I don't like, I'm just, I'm just telling you about me, okay? Is that okay? I'm just telling you about some things I don't like. Oh, here's another one really gets on me. Sagging. Where, where the guys wear the pants, uh, you know what I'm talking about. I, I'm thinking, I wish I had a, a pellet gun or a BB gun. Every time I saw it, I'd just boom, boom, boom. I mean, it just, I'm just telling you about some things. Now, I have a long list, okay? I'm stopping here, but I'm just telling you about some things I personally don't like. It's just things I just don't like. There are some things I do like. Aren't you glad for that? Uh, again, I, I, I could have a very long list. I'm just, gonna, I'm just sharing with some things about me. Is that okay? Just some things about me. Uh, I like my wife. 
top of my list. There's not a person in this world that I enjoy being around any more than my wife. I just, I, I thoroughly uh, enjoy being married. I enjoy being with her. Uh, she's, a, she's a good woman. Uh, through the years, I've heard guys, they get together, you know, they do, you know, how women do, get together and talk about their husbands. Guys do the same thing, get together and talk about their wives. I just make them smile. I think it's great. Have all the misery you want. I have a good wife. I enjoy her. Uh, it, it's, just, it's just a, um, I believe, I believe it is a privilege from God to me, and I, and I just enjoy her. Uh, preaching and teaching. Who would have thought I like preaching and teaching? I, I, I love it. As I said this morning, I, that's my honest heart. When, when I get a phone call, it's, it's, it's like, put me in, Lord, put me in. I just want to do it. it just, that's what I, I like. It. Uh, riding motorcycles. So, someone asked the other day, you like riding? I think that's a little un understatement. I love it. Get out there. I, I want to take mine this weekend to here, and the weather just, just wasn't really good. And I also, I blew up the balloons at my shop when I had an air compressor, and I didn't think I needed that thing on the back of my bike here. But I, I, do, I do love riding. Um, back before I, I opened my own shop, uh, I, would, uh, I, I couldn't really take off whole weeks. It just, it just wasn't conducive for the shop itself. And so I would take weekend trips. And uh, I, would, I would take off on a Friday, and I would return on a Monday. I'd go about 1,300 miles on my bike. I'd just find me a place, a direction, and just head out and go. I, I had a good time. I enjoyed it. Absolutely love it. I love riding four-wheelers. I got involved in that. My, uh, the, the church I, I left there in Corinth, um, it, was a, it was an area that kind of uh, that went out to some property and, and stuff like that. So we had uh, all kinds of people had four-wheelers. I had teen boys coming up, and so we just got involved in it and to join clubs, and we went off to special rides. Me and my boys had some fun times on it. My wife went one time. She said, I don't think you need to take me anymore. You will not have fun if Mama goes. And so we left Mama behind. And uh, matter of fact, anything that goes, boom, boom, I'm in on it. I, I am. Uh, I, I, I'm not into the bicycle riding, jogging. I'm not, I want a motor, man. I want something that pull me. I, I love it. I, I like friend gathering at, at my house. I, I like... I, I, I thoroughly like when a large group comes over to my house. We, we have a, a house that's 2,856 square feet of, of open house. I mean, it's just, it's just there, and uh, we have nothing fine and fancy in it. I love people coming over and just have a large group there. I love when my family gets together, not just one of them. I, I like when they all get together. I have a good time when they're all there, the grandkids are there, and I just, I just fan all that stuff. I get them wild up and wired up and send them on home. That's good stuff. <laughs> so these are just some things I like. My favorite meal, my favorite meal. Probably, I, you know, I have several I like, but probably roast beef, mashed potatoes, and something fried in there. That's my favorite. A little roll, maybe some, some uh, unsweet tea there. That's my favorite meal. Matter of fact, matter of fact, let, let's do this. When I go to a restaurant... And uh, I love eating steak and baked potato and, and salad. Hey, I mean, you like that? You like that? And, and when I do that, I, I like asking the waitress when she says, what kind of salad dressing do you like? I like to ask, what do you think? So, guess, what kind of salad dressing would I like? Yeah, just, yeah it don't matter. Guess. What, who said that? Wrong. <laughs> Probably my least favorite. <laughs> See, you, you, you know, you're learning about me. What else? Something else. Who said that? What? Ranch, yes, yes. When I go to a restaurant, I say, I start doing this. I, I want to, what kind of uh, uh, dressing you want? I said, I want ranch dressing, extra ranch dressing, lost ranch dressing. Did I say I want ranch dressing? They get the picture. And if it's a good waiter or waitress, what they do is they smother ranch dressing and they also bring you back another one just in case that's not enough. So I've shared some things about me, some things I like. Some things I did not. Matter of fact, matter of fact, there are some things this evening that you have learned about me. Some things I don't like, some things I do like that you didn't even know. Your turn. I won't ask you specifically yet. This is for everybody. Just show of hands here. How many here enjoy reading? Hold your hands up. Hold your hands. You, you look around. I want you to look around. So, so put your hands down. I'm assuming the rest of you put your hands up. How many of you do not like reading? Okay? Okay? You're learning something about people around you. Okay? Um, how many of you like following politics? Raise your hand. Oh, 
whoa, whoa, try that again. Wait a minute, let me do it. Let me put your hands back down here. Put your hands back down here. Are you ready for this? How many, and raise them high, how many of you like following politics? Following politics. Three and a, and a child here. That girl loves politics. She, Mama, turn on politics. Turn on politics. I don't want to follow. That's interesting. Uh, that's very interesting. The handful of like that. I assume, I assume the rest of you don't like it. I'll have to admit, I'll have to admit, sometimes it gets very frustrating. Very frustrating, but it's interesting that, uh, here, here's one here. How many like gadgets? Or you're, a, you're a gadget person. I, I'm going to say that's not even half. Uh, how many like technology that goes with the gadgets? Oh, yeah, now we're getting more involved in there, yeah. I am uh, the opposite of that. I, me and, and, and gadgets and technology... Guys, I'm glad you come back. We, we need somebody up here at the altar here. No. Uh, I, me and technology, we don't, we don't really get along well. When I, when I opened my business back in February, and I still struggle with it, the, the thing I, I have trouble with is not doing the work. I've been doing body work 36 years, though I've pastored two churches, been in Bible college all through my life. I've, I've done body work, worked on cars, fixed people's cars up, but it's, it's, it's the technical side. It's the, I'm sorry, it's the... It's the uh, 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 the electronic side. Woo! I called my son one day. I hope you're not offended by this. I called my, my son one day. I said, look, old people do not need electronics. They ought to outlaw them because we're too... Woo! Here, here's one, here's one. How many of you like going to museums? What I thought. This is the thing of the past. My dad loves it. My, my, my wife likes it. One time, one time we, we were on a, a, a vacation. Uh, church I was at, pastor, pastor they, they sent me and my whole family on, on a vacation for 30 days. They had enough of me. They wanted me out of there. And they sent, so we went to Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum. Anybody ever been in that? Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum. So my wife goes in there, and she's reading every little thing. Here, here's me and the rest of the kids. We, we went through that thing, no, 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 we went through that thing in minutes, man. I've seen all I didn't see. I, 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 I've been involved in cars all my life. We have a, we have a very large car museum. It's supposed to be a, a, a really nice thing in Tupelo, Mississippi. You've never been there, go up there and waste your money. I mean, go up there and enjoy it. And uh, so I go in there, look, my wife's not a car person. My wife is not. She goes in there and she does this. Me, I'm just, all right, let's go. Let's find something else to do. I just, that's just not me. It's okay. We, different by design. We, we still okay, do I? We, we still. I'm coming back to church and Bible things, all right? I just, hang with me. Uh, how many of you like playing games, board games and these kind of games? Oh, we got something most people in here like, yeah. This is a gaming church right here. My mom, my mom loved games. I mean, my mom loved games. I, I can do without it myself. But hey, hey, it's something you got in common. You ought to have a night that you just play games. Uh, oh, here, here's one. How many here like? This, this is this is this is a a, a a clarification. Like. I didn't say do. I said like. How many of you like getting up early? <laughs> Very small. There we go, yeah. How many, how many to you early would be, sounds good, is like noon? <laughs> ah. So you've learned some things about people. You didn't know that. Let, let's do this. Tell me something about yourself that probably... Nobody in this room really knows. You don't have to be bad or good. By the way, you might as well be thinking, I'm coming around to some of the rest of you, okay? Just share something that maybe they don't know about you. Something in your, when you was a child, something you like, don't like, or something goes in your head. <laughs> Nothing they don't know? That's scary. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to let you off. Jay, help me out here. Tell, tell me something that they may or may not know about you. He don't, does anybody here know that he didn't like broccoli? See? See, so, so we're, we're, we're getting on a different level, right? April, yeah, I'm coming to you. She said, don't come to me. No, no, no. 
tell me something about you that, that, that maybe they don't know. You didn't like him and Oscar. <laughs> oh, yeah, good stuff. She's not sure she likes him today either, just so you know. <laughs> hey, man, how you doing? Good to see you. I had to ask something like that. That's interesting. That's a good thing, though. My wife told me one time, my wife told me one time, she said, I love you, but I don't like you right now. Tell me something about yourself. Oh, goodness. Tell, tell me something that maybe they don't know. Some, okay. How, how many didn't know that? Several of you. All right. Help me out. What you like when you was in high school? Don't don't say who you like. Say what did you like? <laughs> cheerleading. Okay. Did, did you know she liked cheerleading when she was in high school? Right. So so you're learning some things. You're learning some things about people around you that you didn't really know. I need somebody young. I use Daniel this morning. Michael, is that your name, Michael? Michael, would you please try to figure out something that, 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 that you like or dislike or know or do not know that maybe they don't know about you? How about this? What color socks are you wearing? White. Did you know that he had white socks on? <laughs> See? He knew. He knew. Not everybody else in this room knew. See, what, what I'm trying to say is when, 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 we, uh, when we begin to learn some things about people, we begin to draw closer to them. We have a better understanding of them, okay? Now, I need to carry this one step further. I don't know whether to do it now or in a moment, but let me share this with you. Let's say, for example, that you, uh, you're, you're new to a community and you're now making friends. And... Uh, a friend you're now making, this will apply to, to men or women or husband and wife, whatever, but you're now in a new community, you're making friends, and uh, this, this individual or couple wants you to go out. They're very finicky, and they like this one Chinese restaurant. You could care less. Food is food. So you go, and you have a good time eating this food that is okay. I mean, you wouldn't walk across the street and go back, but I mean, it's okay. You didn't die from it, you didn't gag, you didn't pass out, you were all right. So the next time you get together, hey, let's go to that restaurant, he says or she says, you don't care, it's not that big a deal, so you go. And every time you get together, this person wants to go to that restaurant. Now that it's been about five or six times, uh, the phone rings, you look on caller ID and you say, oh, it's Carl. I just don't feel like going back to that restaurant. I'm not answering the phone call. Are, are we on the same page? You understand? I've not endeared myself to you because, you know, I'm a little different than you all. Okay? Same scenario. There's an individual that, uh, that you're trying to uh, get with, and, and, and they want to go to, let's say, your favorite place. Give me a restaurant around here. In somewhere around here that's good. Just, hey, you mentioned a, 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 a what? He hasn't, he hasn't. Zach's his favorite one, he won't even take me there. Zach's. So, so, so let's say, let's say you, you, they, you decide Zach's. Man, you have a good time, they have a good time. Maybe you're an individual that likes sports and all they talk about is sports or, 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 or you like cooking or traveling. That's what you talk about. So the next time they get together, say, hey, where do you want to go? I don't know. I heard there's a, there's a, there's a good, you like barbecue? Well, I love barbecue. Hey, I hear there's a good place. You go off this barbecue place. Man, you're there and you have a good time and you talk about things you like. The next time you go, call, hey, look, I heard down there a little farther down some seafood place. I don't know how good it is, but I heard it's good. Hey, let's try it. So you go down there. So now about the fourth, fifth time they call. On the same day this other person called. Caller ID. It's Jay. Hey, let's answer the phone because, because we have things in common. We're enjoying it. We're becoming endeared to. 
We, we all understand. You understand what I'm saying? Now, let's flip the car. We're playing car tonight, so I know you like games. Let's turn this to a spiritual side. After all, we are in church, aren't we? <laughs> Colossians says, when Paul, writing there to the people of Colossae, he said, since I heard it, then he began to desire some things of you. And the last thing we read there, that you desire that you may know him. Now, if I put you on the spot and I say, tell me something about yourself that nobody else knows, you go, uh, 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 uh. If I was to do this, and I won't do this because I don't want to embarrass you on a spiritual plane, but if I was to come to you right now and point you out and say, tell me something spiritual about God. Not that you may not know or do know, but I mean, it's just you know, one of those things. So here's what I'd like to do. I want to reacquaint you with that one we know. And everybody in this room knows everybody in this room, but there are some things tonight we talked about that you didn't know about them. Hey, I didn't know they liked gadgets. I don't remember what the other things is. Hey, I don't know. I didn't know they liked uh, sports. Hey, they like museums too. So, so you've learned some things about people in this room. Let's think about God. Let's see about knowing some things about God. The Bible says in Proverbs 11, verse number 20, but such are upright in their way are his delight. I told you some things I like. I like riding my motorcycle. I told you some things I didn't like. I don't like liver and onions. Share some things about God. God likes people that are upright in his way, in their way. Not, in other words, the word upright carries the idea of doing right. It's not they're badgered to do right. It's not that they're cornered to do right, that there are people that just do right. That is applicable in the business. That's applicable in the community. That's applicable in church. That's applicable when the door is shut. God says, when I look down at humanity and I see a man or a woman that is upright, I don't mean just standing upright, but upright in their action, God looks at that and says, I like that. Those of you that are parents, those of you that are parents, we probably understand this. There are some things you tried to instill in your kids. They're out on their own now, and they're not doing that. That is very frustrating. Can I get a witness there? Very frustrating. I know by, example, by, by personal experience. But there are times where they do something that is in keeping what you taught them. It makes us and God says he is delighted when one of his children are upright. Proverbs 11, 1. But a just weight is his delight. A just weight. Now, we're kind of removed from a just weight. But I am told by history and studying that, I am told that oftentimes when they wanted to weigh something, they would have a measurement, or they would have a scale, and it would have a measurement on one side, and so let's say you say, so you go to a place, you say, I want a pound of bacon, they would put on one side of the scale a pound weight. And so they would put enough bacon on there to level it. But they were those that were smart, thought they could make a little more money. And so when you ask for a pound of bacon, they would not put a true pound weight on there. They would put something lesser than a pound. Therefore, that is called what? Help me out, that's called what? It's called stealing. And God says, because he does not like stealing, one of the commandments, because God doesn't like, God says, he, he says, but a just weight is his delight. When a man or a woman is in business and they, they do business in a just way, God says, I like that. Now, I started a business in uh, my official date was February 15th. I believe, I believe that was God moving me to do that. I've had people for a number of years, why don't you start a business? Why don't you start a business? I'm too old for all that, I don't need it. But I quit my job 
in October, just had enough of them, just thought it'd be best to leave with a smile than, uh, not a smile, and so I, I left them, and uh, I just, I was just praying what God would have me do, honestly, I'm just sharing my heart here, honestly, I, I really thought God was going to let me pastor, that's what I, really what I thought of. And, uh, and so I just thought, this is what was happening. And so I just opened to the idea, waiting, and uh, didn't take another job. And I believe God led me and showed me very clearly that I needed to start this shop. Long story goes with it. And to preach around, as I do now, helping churches. The other day, a church called me. And as a matter of fact, I think it was the night I left here, last Sunday night I left here. Can you preach for us Wednesday night? Yeah, glad to. Tickle to death. And so, so now that I've resigned myself, this is the will of God, I am so much happier now. I am, I am. For the last eight years after I left Corinth there, I've not been the happiest, fly, uh, happiest card in the deck, okay? I just, I just kind of been a little frustrated with myself. But now that I know that it's just as important for me to do what I'm doing, I'm okay with it. Now let me go back to the business side of it. So in, in the business side of it, I do body shop, body work. In the business side of it, I've heard a number of times when people say, well, you can't be honest and make any money. You can't be honest and do well. There's just some things you're going to have to do. They just... So I entitled, I, I, I called, I named my body shop Integrity Auto Body. Because I believe this. I believe God honors justice. I believe God delights when my weights are just. L let me share this with you. Uh, I, started, I started with a restoration job. Me and a guy contracted for a certain amount, which was a, which was a very discounted amount because I really took the job in while I was still working at the other place. I was just going to kind of help him. So now I'm on my own. It's not even close to what I charge in my shop. But we agreed on it. So if we agreed on, don't you think I need to keep that? He was willing to pay my price, but no, that's not, that's not how it's done. So, so I'm working on it, and this, this, if you know anything about restorations, you spend a lot of hours on it. So the other day, the other day, uh, this has happened to me twice now, I, I, I reviewed how much time I put in this thing and how much this guy's paid. I'm thinking, <laughs> I shut the clock off. I'm working on this thing for free. Why? Because the Bible says a just weight is his delight. When I do just things, God says, I like that. Well, I'll tell you what, I ain't going to have that. They're going to pay me. Eh. You can make him smile or frown. Your choice. Here, here's another. But the prayer of the upright is his, his delight. Down through the years, down through the years, I've been a lot of groups and a lot of gatherings together of people that pray. You know, who I, you know who I like to hear pray more than anybody else? Is a new Christian. That one that you call on to pray, maybe in a men's circle, or maybe, and that hasn't done it before. <laughs> They're so nervous. They're so tongue-tied. But what they say is from the heart. And this is just my personal opinion. I can't help but to believe when God hears that individual pray from the heart, God looks down and God's delighted. He smiles. But I, I, I'm thinking that sometimes we pray so much out of habit or mode that, uh, hey, brother so-and-so, why don't you pray? Dear God, great God, our Father, same prayer we prayed last time. What he's saying is the prayer of the upright, when a child of God goes to God and says, Lord, whatever. God says that's his delight. Now let me, let me kind of make the application here. My kids, I have five kids, one still living at home. Thank the Lord he's about ready to get out. Yes! <laughs> five at home, or five kids, one still at home. The four that are out of the home. Four that are out of the home. They do not ask for anything. Do not ask for anything. Let me rephrase this. Seldom do they ask for anything. And when I say seldom, I'm saying almost never ask for anything. They're, they're, just, they're just not that type of people. But when I get a chance to do something for them, 
I like that. When my daughter calls up and says, hey, I need air in this stroller. Is there any way you can help me? I like that. She calls up and says, uh, our brakes are squealing. We, we want to sell this car. What do we do? I said, bring it by. Let me do it. It's not a burden. My, my kids are not a, a, a bloodsuckers. You know how some parents are like, ah, I don't want to hear it. No, my kids aren't that way. The ones out of home. <laughs> One's still at home. It hasn't transitioned yet. Get them out of here so we can. So, so when they do, when I, when I get an opportunity... I, I, am, I am well okay with that. Matter of fact, I, I am absolutely thrilled and delighted to be able to do that. Be able to do that. How much more, God, when we go to him with a, with a sincere heart and say, God, I don't know what to do in this situation. Would you give me wisdom? God looks down and says, I delight in that guy's prayer. God, my heart's broke. Would you heal me? God looks down and says, I like that lady's prayer. So he says he delights in it. Here, here's Jeremiah, says Jeremiah 9, chapter 24, uh, chapter 9, verse number 24. That I, the Lord, which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth, for in these things I delight, saith the Lord. What things? The loving kindness, the judgment, and the righteousness. I'm trying to tell you about some things God likes. I told you about some things I like. We shared some things that we like. Now I'm talking about what God likes. Isaiah 61, 8 says, For I, the Lord, love judgment. Interesting thing. I thought it may be a good idea to go to the dictionary and look this word up. You'll like this, Mike, because we kind of mentioned this this morning. Judgment is good sense and discretion. Where is judgment gone in this world? I mean, people are absolutely crazy. Where is the common sense? Well, I'm sorry, I took out the teeth, not preach. Good sense and discretion. God says, God says, for I love, for I the Lord love judgment. Love people to have good sense. Webster's 1828 dictionary defines it as the process of examining facts and arguments to ascertain propriety and justice. When God says he looks down and sees his, his humanity making good, sound decisions, God says, like that, it's like my kids. As, they, as they've grown up and got out of the house, when they first got out of the house, they're going, I wouldn't do that. Not my place to tell them. So they do that. But then they do something that's very wise. Like that, like that. I'm waiting for the day my youngest son does that. Very wise. <laughs> He's so much like me when I was a kid. <clears throat> David said in 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verse number 17, the Lord takes pleasure in uprightness. In Psalms 35, verse number 27, the Lord has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Speaking of David, uh, uh, he delights in them that fear him, takes pleasure in his people. But they that are, uh, Proverbs 12, 22, but they that deal truly are his delight. And so we talked about things I like, some things you like. Then I told you about some things I don't like. We talked about some things you don't like. How about some things God doesn't like? Uh, Proverbs 8, 13, arrogancy and the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. God said he didn't just, just like it. God says I hate it. How about, how about Revelations chapter, Re Revelation chapter 2, verse number 6, the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which also I hate. This is that group that believe in rank and hierarchy in the church. Clergy, common man. First Peter talks about that. But the truth is, one of the beauty, beautiful things about Christianity is at the cross, all ground is level. There are no big eyes and little U's. God says when we begin to have the big eyes and the little U's in the church, God says, I hate that. Let me give you another set of text. Proverbs chapter 6, verse number 16 through 19. 
These six things does the Lord hate, yea, seven are abominations. A proud look. I'm talking about things you and I do that God says he does not like. When I have such pride in my heart that it comes out my eyes, and we've all seen it, we've all been there. God said, I don't like that. A lying tongue. My wife hates a liar. This is a lot of things she can deal with, but she does not like liars. Not that I like them, but I, you know, it's one of her pet peeves. Hands that shed innocent blood. Heart that devises wicked imagination. I'm talking about what God doesn't like. Feet that are swift and running to mischief. A false witness. Interesting that he's got lying tongue and a false witness. There's some differences, but very similar. And he that sowed discord among the brethren. Now, I'm sure tonight we could talk about some more things that he likes. I'm sure tonight we could talk about some more things that he doesn't like. But the question is what we're going to do with what we have already. James says in chapter number four. Now, I, I, mentioned, I mentioned one of the, one of the ways we endear ourselves to other people. One of the ways we begin to build a relationship with other people is we find out what their likes are and their dislikes. And when, when, when our likes become similar, hey, I'm glad he called. When our likes are dissimilar, ah, don't answer the phone. I don't want to go out with them. You, you understand what I'm saying? Let me give you an illustration, then I'll give you the verse. My wife will not like me giving this illustration. I can give it anyway. She won't cuddle with you. Years ago, we were in Bible college. We didn't have much money. Never had much money. But anyway, we were in Bible college. And uh, <laughs> we'd go to a grocery store, and we had very little bit to spend. Very little bit. You know, like 20 or $30, or something like that. Very little bit. We, we lived several weeks on $20. Um, and we go to the grocery store, and she'd pick something up, and I would say, real loud so everybody here, Gina, we can't afford that. All we have is $5. <laughs> Douglas, it wouldn't bother you if I did that. But it would bother the Kent, wouldn't it? He don't like stuff like that, does it? It bothered my wife, too. It got her so frustrated. She turned on me one day. I never did do it after that. Why didn't I do it after that? Because I wanted, I, I, I wanted to endear myself to her, not the opposite. I'm going to give you one more. She will not like me telling this one at all. Do not tell her this one. We have been married again. This is Bible college. I have so many I can tell. I'm not going to tell all of them. I'm just telling you some things to help us understand. In Bible college. Graduated Bible college. Now we're at my first uh, church as associate pastor. I was associate pastor at one place and two pastors, but associate pastor. My kids are still young. I don't remember their ages, but they're still kids, kids, you know, four or five, something like that. They're upstairs. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> and we're on the couch, and I'm kind of tickling her, aggravating her. Guys, you know what I'm talking about? You know, just kind of. And uh, she's telling me, stop. What's stop mean? You know, it's a young guy. What's stop mean? Who knows what stop means? And she hauled off and hit me. Boom! Well, I hit her back. Boom! I'm having a good time. <laughs> she hits me back. I thought we were playing. She hits me. I hit her on the arm. You know, on the arm. Who dab you up? Boom, boom, boom. I'm having a good time. <laughs> You're thinking, well, oh, this guy's crazy. <laughs> she all of a sudden gets up. <laughs> boom! Right upstairs she goes. I'm thinking, I, I'm, I'm young and dumb. What's wrong with her? That's the truth. That's the truth. She comes down those stairs with a letter. If you have her, do not get her. I'm clueless. I never did do that again. Because my wife is important to me. And I have tried to cultivate that relationship. I try to find the things she likes, and I try to do those things. 
and I try to find the things she dislikes, I try to stay away from them. No, we've been married long enough now, she's trained me well enough to stay away from them. When I was younger, there was a lot of them. And here's the thing. Oh, I lost my place here in James chapter 4. Here's the thing. James says in chapter number 4, James, where did James go? It's here. I got it. James chapter 4, draw nigh to God, and he'll draw nigh to you. Draw nigh to God, and he'll draw nigh to you. Now, now listen to me, and I'm done. I, I'm, 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 I'm right here at the end of it. Listen to me. I believe you gathered here tonight because you love God. Now, I, I believe you come to church because you have a desire to grow, a desire to draw close to him. I really do. I believe that's what it is. The Bible says if you draw nigh to him, he will draw nigh to you. So here's what we do with what we know about God. The things God likes, we need to do it. The things God doesn't like, we don't need to do it. And as I draw near to God, guess what? God's drawn near to me. As I draw near to God, guess what? God's drawn near to me. I go back to my wife and I's relationship. Now, my wife come out of the womb perfect. I didn't. I'm a mess, Douglas. I, I can relate to that. You know, I, I am. But through the years, through the years, I've kept my finger on the pulse of our relationship and I've tried to work on Carl. I ain't worried about working on her. She's all right. It's me. And, I, and I've learned this 33 and a half years. I have a good relationship with my wife. I've learned as I draw closer to her, she's getting closer to me. Draw closer to her, she's getting closer to me. So that's the thing as a child of God. We want to be closer to the Lord, but what we need to do is understand what he likes and do it, and what he doesn't like, don't do it. That's my lesson tonight. If you'll bow your heads just for a moment, I'm going to pray here in a moment. <clears throat> what I would like to do is just take a moment of silence in our hearts before the Lord and just a personal moment between you and him where you cloud everything else out and offer yourself to him afresh and anew that God may work in on your heart. I'll take that moment, then I'll pray. Our Father, tonight, in that lovely name of Jesus Christ that we so sing about, we come before your presence because we believe in you. And God, we, we as humanity, we understand our, our frailties. We understand our faults. We understand those weaknesses. But God, we come to you not on behalf of our weaknesses. We come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. We come in his authority, not our authority. And so we would ask for the privilege of understanding who you are. For the privilege of knowing what you like. Understanding what you don't like. Help us to gravitate to what you like. Avoid that which you don't like. God, help us in this hour to draw close. I believe these people have been faithful. I believe they've desired to, 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 to maintain that relationship with you, to, to continue going on forward in Christ. I pray that you'd empower them to believe there are so many things out there that clamor for our attention. So many things out there try to clamor for our faith. God, I pray tonight that you put a hedge upon each, each individual and each family here and upon this church. And God, protect them from the evils without. And God, I pray that you'd help this, this local body to draw close to you. I pray the individuals in this room as families, I pray they draw close to you. I pray that each individual would draw close to you. God, that we'd have a, a better understanding and a better relationship. And God, we'd have the fullness that you promised in John chapter number 10. That you come to give life and life more abundant. Regardless of what our circumstances and situations are, may we have the abundance of you in our life. Help us now, I pray. 
As we go about our way, would you dismiss us with your goodness and with your grace? Would you protect us and strengthen us as we ought? I pray specifically for the church. God, as they're asking for a leader, I pray that you'd send to them the right man to lead this place. And God, give them a heart that follows, that your will would be accomplished here. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you and good night.